Hey, welcome back. So today I am going to be talking about the Easy 3 K1 Mini 3D printer. Now, as you can see, this printer is, well, well, it's mini. Um, so what's amazing about this printer is you can get it for around $100. Now on Amazon, it's gonna cost you around $130, but with that comes free returns if you don't like it. You know, 30 days, you wanna return it, take it to Kohl's, UPS store, you're done with it, right? Or for literally $100 on Banggood and some other Chinese retailers, uh, you can get this uh, shipped to your home. And it's a very simple, straightforward 3D printer. First of all, assembly, super easy. So it comes with a little screwdriver, eight little screws to go with it, and those eight screws just attach these two posts to the base. That's it. You then plug in uh, some connectors in the back. Uh, there are these small little uh, uh, four port uh, connectors. Uh, you can't, you know, it's super simple to do. After that, you'll notice there's no LCD screen, right? This, they kept this, they followed the KISS method, right? Keep it simple, stupid. Uh, there is a home button with a little picture of a home on it. You push that, and what do you think it does? Well, the different parts of the printer go to their home positions. So X and Y go to the home, and then the Z axis also goes to its home. You have plus and minus. Uh, the plus for loading the filament, and when you push that, it automatically heats up the filament for you. Uh, once the filament's heated and you have it loaded, you can actually push that to extrude a little bit. The minus does just the opposite. It unloads the filament. So you push it, and then again, it heats up the uh, hot end if needed, and then it will retract the filament for you. Then it has a play button. And all you do is you hit play on that and it will print the last file that you uploaded to the flash, uh, flash card. So uh, there's a, a flash uh, micro SD card uh, that goes in there and uh, it comes with a couple of uh, prints. I didn't bother with those. I designed my own things, print those, um, printed those, but it's super simple to use. Um, next to that, you have a USB port. Uh, that, so if you want to connect this printer to your computer, or in my case, a Pi, OctoPi, OctoPrint, uh, to print and control using a print server. And next to that is the power outlet, and you just plug it in. There is no power on-off switch, and so you can just power it in by, but it turns on automatically when you plug it in. The manual uh, that this comes with is super easy to follow. It has nice color pictures telling you how to assemble it, tells you all the different parts that come with it, um, and then instructions on how to uh, get started, uh, leveling your bed plate, etc. Super easy to use, and it's only about 10 pages long. And it's written in really good English, uh, which uh, is remarkable for uh, you know, such a cheap printer that they took so much time to, to write this really well. And then mine also came in instructions in Japanese. Um, so interesting there as well. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the print. So the print quality actually is very good. So I printed a handle for one of my files uh, using this. And so the bed plate actually allows it to be printed upright like this. I put a brim on it, actually it printed like that. Um, and it printed no problem. Um, you hit that play button and you can actually pause the print and it allows you to change the filament out like this. Uh, so mid print, very easy to change out the filament. Now, if you have OctoPrint like I have installed, it's even easier to do. Uh, but uh, I tested that here and you can see the base of this little uh, dragon cell phone holder uh, is white and then the upper body is green. And you can see the, the print quality on that is pretty, really good. It's just really, really good. Other things, uh, I tested it with TPU. Uh, here is an eyepiece cover for one of my telescopes. Um, and that works just fine. Um, and printed on here, no problem. Heated it up to 220, which is what the printing temperature is for this particular brand of TPU. Printed out, no problem at all. Um, and then if you saw my last video looking at the uh, Ender 3 uh, extruder knob, uh, I printed off a, a new version of my R2-D2 knob head, and that came out pretty good on this too. Now, is it as good as the Ender 3? Uh, not quite. Uh, the Ender 3 has an advantage. It can print a lot faster. It can print uh, 60 millimeters a second. Uh, uh, this 
uh, prints only up to 40, so a little bit slower print speed, but still your typical speed that you would find on uh, your, your normal printer. And so let's do a quick comparison here. So for $100, $140, uh, you know, somewhere in that ballpark with taxes, etc., cetera, uh, you're getting a decent machine. Um, it's only got a four inch build plate, so a very small uh, build volume. Uh, that's 100 millimeters, 100 millimeters, 100 millimeters. So uh, four inches cubed. But that's more than enough to allow you to print a lot of things. Um, it's not heated, so you can touch the build plate, it's not hot. Uh, the hot end obviously gets hot to heat up and melt the filament. Uh, the other nice thing is this is removable. So once this is done, uh, we'll pop that off and we'll see how that works. But the other thing, this has been printing the whole time. You notice how quiet it is? Most printers are not this quiet, especially printers that are under three or four hundred dollars. Not this quiet. It's awesome. Uh, the other thing that goes, because it's small, you notice that it has a smaller print spool. So they recommend 250 gram size. This is a 500 gram. Um, I've been able to fit a full spool of filament um, on the back. If I rotate it like this and put the holders together, it will actually pull it off and uh, actually work. Um, I was pretty surprised. And it supports the weight no problem at all. Uh, alternatively, you could put a full spool holder in the back and just have it pull from that. Um, up over and that would work as well. Uh, the other thing that I've done is I've incorporated OctoPrint, right? So I took a Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, I designed a little holder for it. It just slots on right here. There's little slots in, already um, on, the, on the printer itself. I just have this fit, a ribbon cable goes through, connects up here to my Pi camera, and then I can monitor this uh, using my computer. So I don't need a screen here. Don't use it. Even on my other printers, I don't use that screen. The, I use the, uh, the computer screen almost exclusively. Uh, the other thing you could do is if you don't want to go through the uh, uh, installing OctoPrint is you could just connect it directly using the USB cable. USB cable comes with the machine. So that's great that it included that. You plug it directly into your computer and then you can control it with your slicer software like Cura. Um, very easy to do and set up, and they actually have instructions on uh, the micro SD card they provide how to set this machine up in Cura, even with a pure pile for it, makes it super easy to use. A um, couple other things that I've noted. One, if you do set it up with your printer or with OctoPrint uh, like I've done, uh, these buttons, they will work, but when they do their intended purpose, so for example, if you wanted to push the retract button and remove the filament, it sends a code and it interrupts the serial connection. So my suggestion is uh, if you do connect it up to your printer or to your computer, the printer up to your computer, uh, just use the computer to control it. Don't try and go back using the, the, the printer buttons to do that. So our print is almost done. Um, once it's done, what you'll see is uh, the printer will send a signal to the power supply turning itself off. One of the reasons why I strongly advocate using OctoPrint as a print server is you can have any printer that you have that can, can be controlled this way uh, turn itself on and off. Um, and you can control that all with a computer. Um, I can give a control of my cell phone um, and do that all from you know, the safety of my house anywhere and always put a camera on it so I can see uh, what's going on. Um, and then uh, with the different coding and whatnot, we can actually code this so that it presents the print out here and it, it comes off just fine. So here it is. It's done. You notice again, you see that's the, as about as loud as it gets. And if you listen, you'll hear it turn itself off. So once it's returned to um, its home positions, it'll turn itself off. There we go. And then I don't have to wait for this to cool down because it's uh, not heated. And so it's just very fl flimsy, but it's a very good uh, build surface. And then the parts um, just, oh. where did that go? Yeah, the parts uh, just peel right off and then uh, you just reattach it and ready to go. Now, if you wanted to print another part right away, you don't have to have it turn off automatically. You can have it uh, keep keep going and you can print another part. Uh, but there you have it. That's the K1 Mini Printer by Easy3. Uh, go check one out, $100, recommend it.